as the campaign opens, there will always be in any election and between elections, small minded and prejudiced persons who have a neurotic compulsion to feel superior to somebody or an urge to blame some racial or minority group for their own individual failures or misfortunes. But these people are not representative of America. They have rarely determined elections in the past, and they will not determine the one that is coming. Millions of Catholics, Protestants, Jews, and people of no formal faith will testify that prejudice of faith cannot be endorsed in this country without doing political damage to the persons or candidates who endorse it. That's from the New York Times speaking about Mitt Romney's uh, Mormonism and the American people. Now, let me read that to you again. There will always be in any election and between elections small-minded and prejudiced persons who have a neurotic compulsion to feel superior to somebody or an urge to blame some racial or minority group for their own individual failures and their own misfortunes. But these people are not representative of America. Mm -hmm. They have rarely determined elections in the past and will not determine this one coming. Mm -hmm. Millions of Catholics, Protestants, Jews, and people of no formal faith will testify that prejudice cannot be endorsed in this country without doing political damage to the persons or candidates who endorse it. That's awesome that the New York Times stood up and finally said something about this uh, Wait a minute, hang anti-Mormon on. That, bigotry. This uh, September great. 4th. This came out September 4th. Wait, it's not September 4th yet. Uh, 1960. Oh. Wait, oh, it what? wasn't about Mitt Romney. It was, I'm sorry, it was about Catholicism huh. and John F. Kennedy. Now what exactly is the New York Times saying about Mitt Romney? The same thing. Are they plagiarizing their own reports? And no, they're calling. The they're, is that it? No, they're calling. <laughs> not quite. No. no. Okay. No, not exactly. I mean, they're not exactly that. They're calling um, Salt Lake City mm. the empire of corporate greed. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's different. Um, That's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. They're talking about magic underwear. They're uh, talking about the, they're bashing baptism for the dead despite the fact that it's in the New Testament. Uh, they've got the Maureen Dowd article that appeared in uh, in the New York Times. Is Elvis a Mormon? Uh, I, I, even if he was baptized for the dead, that's his choice. We, uh, let's say you don't believe in the, in the religion and we baptize for the dead. You don't believe in it. It's nonsense. How did his baptism hurt you in any way? <laughs> How did it hurt him in any way? Let's say it's nonsense. How did that hurt anyone else? Because I, I, I'm the, the, always the at a loss to, because to they, understand that. Well, because people don't understand it, and it's and it's and it's understand. You know, whatever. I mean, it seems like a weird thing if you don't really understand that what it's saying. And is, yeah, I haven't read the New Testament where it talks well, about baptism whatever. for the dead. It doesn't. It, people don't. People don't see that. They don't read that. Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't. Uh, and then they think, well, you're baptizing. You're forcing people. No, no, no. No, yeah, it's just you're just uh, allowing that person to choose if you believe in that. See, I mean, I think this, this is the most compassionate thing. If you believe in it, that it's a gateway that Jesus said, you got to be baptized. OK, great. You got to be baptized. OK, good. So what happens to all those people that are just going to burn in the fires of hell that went before before Jesus before? I mean, that's why the ancestry is so important. It's why Barack Obama, we have to find out. Is he really the descendant of, of the first slave in America? Yes, no. why would you doubt that? Why would you doubt that? Because I don't believe anything about this president <laughs> anymore. But anyway, but again, you, don't, you, don't, you don't agree with it, so what's the big deal? So why, why would you, why is it okay to bash? And here's this, there's an exclusive story from the um, Media Research uh, Center that talks about... Great job. That talks about the bigotry here in America... Um, on from liberals, not conservatives, from liberals, 41%, is it 41%? 43. 43% of uh, liberals say they won't vote for a Mormon. They're less likely to. That's less crazy. Less likely to vote for a Mormon. I think it's 18% of the country says they will not, which is four and a half times the amount of people who say they will not vote for a black president. So at theblaze.com, they have this great article from uh, that they did with the Media Research Center about the difference between the coverage in 1960 from the media with uh, JFK's Catholicism compared to Mitt Romney's Mormonism now, and how instead of supporting and uh, decrying the bigotry, they're piling on. 
they're adding to it. They're accentuating it and talking about racism and they're talking about bigotry and they're, you know, magic underwear and all of those kinds of things. And it's perfectly fine now. Wow. A lot has changed in 50 years. Gone the other way. Yep. Gone the absolute other way. I mean, if you look at, um, uh, if you look at uh, what, I mean, I'm I'm just looking at the horrifying things that people have said Mm. um, about, uh, about Mormons. We're really not that, we're really not that far uh, away from where people were in the 1800s about Mormons. It's one of the only things, it, Jews, Mormons, it's one of the only things that is really left that is totally cool. And it's because of ignorance. Look, you may not agree, and that's fine. Nobody, you don't have to. I don't have to agree with your religion. You don't have to agree with that religion. You don't have to agree with any religion. We don't have to agree with each other. We don't. No, no, nobody has to. Nobody. This is this is not a theocracy. And um, I'm telling you that, you know, I I gave this speech. Did you did you get my speech from the religious thing uh, last week, Pat? I asked you about an hour ago to do it. Yeah, you I remember. Do have, um, yeah, it's that. it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing when you look at the bigotry that is left. The only time bigotry really rears its ugly head is when there's um, ignorance. Because you can disagree, but disagreeing with people is not bigotry. That's like, uh, for instance, um, you know, abortion. We can disagree. We can disagree with each other. But that that doesn't mean I hate you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it only means that when you're a chicken sandwich place that talks about gay marriage, then it's hatred. Then yeah. we've learned. Yeah, I mean, and it's so interesting because they attack Romney on the polygamy of his great great grandfather, which didn't exist. He did not. His great grandfather was not on. He lived on a polygamist commune. farm or commune yeah. or something in Mexico. Yeah, but he was not. Well, one of his relatives did. One of his right. relatives did have okay. more wives. But they completely ignore, completely ignore Barack Obama's father, who was a polygamist. You mean his great grandfather? Not his great grandfather. No. no, not his grandfather. His father. His father. Three wives. Had three wives at the three same time. Three wives at the same time. And what is the excuse? Well, that's his culture. Oh, well, wait, <laughs> well, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold it. Just a hmm. second. That was the culture back then. A hundred years ago, that was the culture. You can't, you dismiss the culture 30 years ago? Forty years ago, but but not one hundred and fifty years ago. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's it's very odd. And, they, and you know what? They never go against um, Harry Reid's uh, Harry Reid's. Uh, no, oh, no, never, no, never, never. Of course, not. never. And so you know, if you read this story on the on the Blaze, the thing you walk away, the thing I walked away from uh, this with is that it's the way you vote. Oh, it totally is. Think about this. I mean, Reed is a great example. Unless or until uh, Mitt Romney wins, Harry Reid is the most powerful Mormon in America. Is he not? I mean, at least politically he is. He's he's the head of the Senate. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's yeah. he's the, you know, the Democratic... Well, he's the le- most powerful one that they'll let you know about. Oh, that's right. I, I mean, the that. one that's running the basement meetings in the temples. Mm-hmm. So, man, those guys, they're, they're really powerful. Of course. So they're you got really that. powerful. But those are the, the, the chicken sacrificers? Shh. No, so I'm You've said too much. said too much. You've said too You've much. Said too much. Oh, boy. And yet the media is so focused constantly on race. Why? Well, we have, obviously, the first black president, and that's, uh, that's an issue. But it's constant. Where there is a, right now, there are more people, as we said, four and a half times the amount of people who won't vote for a Mormon president who, uh, that won't vote for a black president. There's still, to this day, more people who won't vote for a Catholic president than won't vote for a black president. Okay, you know what? You know, here's what I was just going to say. Mm. Let's not make this about Mormons. Let's make this about religion. Because mm-hmm. look at what they called um, Santorum. Santorum was a cultist, too. Yeah, papist. Yeah, he was a papist. He was a papist and a cultist. Mm. He was in a cult as well. I mean, mm. that doesn't even... First of all, the cult thing doesn't even apply to Catholics because the Catholic... That's that's the origination of the cult. They were the ones who said, this is the doctrine, and if you deviate from the doctrine, look up the word cult. If you deviate from the doctrine, you are in a cult. So they're the ones who came up with the word cult, and that somehow or another, they're in a cult now? 
I don't even understand how that even works. It shows people don't even understand what the language even means. Right. Kind of a big cult, too, with a billion and a half people. (laughs) That's a big cult. It's a big cult. (laughs) Man. It's a big cult. But look, they conquered this. They conquered this, they say, in 1960 with uh, JFK. Americans don't have a problem with Catholics. I mean, some people do. But they're they're so yeah. they're small, small, small percent. Small. Mm-hmm. It's small. kinda like the percentage of people who believe we didn't go to the moon. <laughs> it's actually small. And those who believe that the earth is flat. <laughs> now that demeans them a little bit, but they're so it's stupid a, they don't know they're being demeaned. It is it is smaller than those who don't believe we went to the moon. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but yet it's not when it comes to political reasons. When it comes to political reasons, the left will use it. It shows you they are they're European religionists. They only use religion as a as a front for government. Yeah, I mean it, it. when uh, when it's a, a situation with Rick Santorum or something, the religion's scary. It's this reason to fear him because he's going to track. But when it's uh, Jeremiah Wright. Uh, There's that, nothing scary oh, there at all. Nothing scary He actually there. preaches hatred. Yeah, he says the government created HIV to kill African Americans. But that's not, not scary. scary. Not scary at that's all. That's nothing yeah. to look at. But Rick Santorum wants traditional marriage. Fear him. I mean, I, it's the double standard is well covered, but absolutely crystal clear in this case. And, you know, here we have a situation where a guy is trying to run. It's not like this is like some weird thing that might happen in the future. Mitt Romney is running for president right now. He's one of two guys who might win it. And this is a story in which they continue to trash him. They continue to mock his faith. No, I like 